G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for another edition of my power rankings, which I've started to do every three rounds now, just to get a little bit of a glimpse of how I'm ranking the teams based on the form that we're seeing in the AFL. And I guess the idea of it is to try and put together a ladder that is more reflective of how likely teams are to, I guess, make finals, but also go all the way and win the premiership. If you've been with the channel for a little while now, you probably know exactly what this video is all about, but I suppose what we're trying to look at is use the data that we have from games that we've seen across this year, plotting form lines. Some power rankings are kind of intended as more of a form ladder. I'm trying to go for something a little bit deeper and try and plot, I guess, how likely teams are to win the flag, in my opinion. Again, this is not so much a prediction. I'm not trying to predict the final year ladder. I'm also look at what's happened in the past in order to rank teams in the order in which I think they're likely to win the premiership. So. As always, guys, a little shout out to the sponsors of the True Footy YouTube channel, Manscaped.com, who have all your male grooming needs that you could possibly want. Everything from the Lawnmower 4.0, which is their body hair trimmer, uh, which comes with a LED light so that you can see what you're doing. You can take into the shower, it's waterproof, and there's a ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents and all the other things like colognes, etc. If you're looking to upgrade your manscaping routine, go to manscaped.com and you can get 20% off on all those products and free shipping by using the code TRUEFOOTY20. So let's crack into the power rankings. We're going to start from the bottom to all the way down to 18th, of course. I'm going to start off with the top four, and uh, I'll just come out and say the top four that I've got in my power rankings is the same as the current ladder. So we've got Collingwood, Melbourne, the Brisbane Lions, and Port Adelaide. So the Pies, in my opinion, still the team to beat since I've uh, last done a video. They've won all their games. They've, in fact, won five on the bounce, including a tough away win against the Crows, and they also beat the Swans and the Giants since then. So nothing really new to report there on Collingwood. Melbourne, similarly, uh, they had a bit of a blip in their last five with one loss to Essendon in Adelaide. But since then, they've kind of capitalized on a fairly easy run of fixtures and uh, have gone four and one in the last five as well. So clearly the top two teams. Brisbane, for me, is probably the third of a clear top three, in my opinion. Those are the top three contenders. Brisbane nudge into third. They've had a great run. They've won five in a row. Interestingly, they've beaten the two teams above them, but I still have them slightly below because the fact that Brisbane started the year with one win and two losses that were not great losses has them slightly behind, but to be honest, it's line ball. The biggest change in my top four is, of course, Port Adelaide, who have found themselves way into the actual top four on the AFL ladder, which is very impressive after their, you know, average start to the season, in particular in rounds two and three. But we've learned a lot more about uh, Collingwood since then, that big loss at the MCG. Uh, and then their loss in the showdown doesn't look so bad now as Adelaide have really continued that development as well. I think Port have won six in a row with their most impressive victory in recent times, probably the away win against the St Kilda side that looks very good. So they've really shot up into contention. Hopefully they can sustain it. They've also a little bit been a beneficiary of some teams in that range uh, going for that fourth spot, probably dropping off in recent weeks, in particular Geelong and St Kilda in, uh, well, in the last week or so, probably just nudges them out. In fifth spot, I am denied about this. Was, this was the first tricky spot in my rankings. I'm going to retain St Kilda there, who are fifth on the actual ladder. I've got them fifth in my uh, lap rankings as well. And they've only won two of their last five, but they've had a relatively tough run of fixtures. And what sticks out in our memory is the fact that in uh, the last weekend just gone, they got absolutely trounced by an Adelaide side. That is very tough to beat in Adelaide. But I think in terms of exposed form, St Kilda still have that fifth spot for me. Their losses have been against tough opposition. Yes, it was a bad day against Adelaide where it was a blowout, but Port Adelaide are the fourth best side in the comp right now, and they lost to them, and uh, the other side they lost to was Collingwood, and both of them were close losses. So for me, St Kilda could go either way, but for now, just in fifth spot. The Cats I've got below them, uh, even though they probably realistically have a bigger chance to win on grand final day, and they've, they've gone four and one, but looking at their fixture, some of the teams they've beaten, they've beaten a very struggling Sydney side. They beat the Hawks and the Eagles, and they just recently lost to Richmond. So while Richmond do have the capacity to play some really good footy, the body of work that Geelong's put in, you know, since the start of the season, and don't forget they did start 0-3, so they've been lower in my rankings and had to work their way up. The body of work there is not convincing enough for me for them to overtake St Kilda, but obviously this is just a moment in time and it could still happen. Separating 7th and 8th for me was very tricky between the Adelaide Crows and the Bulldogs, and I've got Adelaide in 7th because on their day they just look so red hot and they're coming fresh off a big win against St Kilda in Adelaide. They butchered Carlton earlier as well, and they did a respectable job of, uh, I think it was a 26 point loss against the Cats at GMHBA, a ground they're not very good at. So it's very tight, the difference between them and the Bulldogs on exposed form, but I think the, the dangerousness of Adelaide in top gear is what slightly maybe put them ahead 
of the Bulldogs who I've got in eighth. And, and the Bulldogs have been ticking over consistently over the last few weeks. To be honest, it hasn't been a, a tough run of fixtures. They've just beaten who's in front of them. Uh, they've lost a lot of their major tests this year against Port Adelaide, St Kilda and Melbourne. But they're still in my top eight for sure, but I've just got them below Adelaide. Then I think in their own little group at the moment, I've got Essendon and Gold Coast just outside the top eight as teams that are probably on quality, just about there, but obviously slightly behind. Essendon's an interesting one. They started the year so well. They have lost their last four games, I believe. But when you look at their actual run of fixtures there, it's been a very, very tough run. They played the Lions and the Power away. They played the Cats and the Pies, and they played the Demons. And they did actually beat the Demons. So to come away from that run of fixtures, given what we know now for one from five, it looks bad on paper, but it's not concerning enough for me to drop Essendon away because I think some of their best form this year has certainly warranted a ranking of at least ninth. Gold Coast as well have put in a very clear improvement on the last uh, you know, five weeks in compared to how they went previously this season. And uh, I'll get to the other teams in a minute, but I think the teams below them have had serious patches of being very unconvincing, whereas the Gold Coast, I think, are on the up now. I'll give you an example. For instance, some of the power rankings I've seen still have Richmond ahead of the Gold Coast, but I think that's a little bit reactionary to Richmond beating the Cats because the Suns have done that themselves. And it was just a couple of weeks ago that Gold Coast beat the Tigers in Melbourne. So they're really strong performance against the Demons uh, at Gold Coast where they nearly won. And then their ability to trounce West Coast, I think, is also a new evolution. I think that would be their biggest win in a long time, the Gold Coast Suns. Yes, West Coast are absolute dog shit, but the Gold Coast putting them away does show that they've certainly improved from the opening month of the season. The next block of four teams kind of all have something in common in that they're teams that we expected to be around the mark for finals this year, but look dreadfully off the pace. We've got Richmond, Carlton, Fremantle, and Sydney. Now, I did just put a big caveat on Richmond's win over Geelong, and I do think the reaction to that perhaps has been a little bit overstated, but at the same time, I think a lot of it comes from the fact that we still respect Richmond for what they can be rather than what they have been, I guess, for the last few years. And that may be valid because they still have a lot of star power. We saw Dustin Martin, you know, uh, wind back the clock and kick four goals against Geelong, and it could be a sign of things to come, or it could just be a random performance where they click and they could go back to being mediocre pretty shortly. But regardless, because of their win, they've taken a big scalp. I've got them as the next best side in the competition, and they've overtaken Carlton, who over the last five weeks have looked very indifferent. So by comparison, you know, for most of this season, I have rated Carlton higher than Richmond, but on current form, a win like that at the G against the Cats, who have improved since uh, when the Blues beat them in round two, I think that is beyond Carlton at this current stage of the season. Maybe they're in a form slump, but for me, they're ranked below Richmond on current form. The Blues have got one and four from their last five, one big win against West Coast, and admittedly, it has been a tough fixture. They got trounced by the Crows in Adelaide. We know that that's a pretty tough fixture right now, but still, they looked a fair way off the pace and equally against the Lions and the Saints. Tough fixtures, but again, Carlton didn't really look as good as they might have looked you know, earlier parts of the season. So Carlton are on the slide for me, and I hopefully they arrest that momentum soon. Fremantle, we know that their issues have been highlighted well and truly on this channel. Uh, Drews is obviously a big Freo fan, so he lays into them every second week. I think those issues have been masked a little bit by two wins, admittedly good wins, against some very average opposition. They smashed Hawthorne in Perth, and uh, they've beaten Sydney away. And while we didn't expect the Sydney win, we do have to also acknowledge that Sydney are in a bad way at the moment. So there's progress there from Fremantle. I've talked about how I think structurally they're looking a little bit better. But again, they're not going to move massively up my rankings just because they've beaten those two teams that they have. And Sydney, they've probably been the most disappointing side this year. I think that's probably an understatement considering they were in the grand final last year. But while injuries have been a concern and it seems to be getting worse, Callum Mills just done a uh, four to six week injury, I think. Whether or not it is entirely down to injuries, I still think the best 22 that Sydney are selecting each week is better than what they've actually produced on field. Their recent losses against the Giants and now Fremantle, that's starting to make it look like finals might be a bridge too far for them this year. Then we've got our bottom four, and we've got the Giants, North, Hawthorne, and West Coast. The Giants are looking probably easily the strongest team out of that bottom four on current form. They're three and six. They've won two of their last five, which you know comparatively is not a bad result. Their wins this year have been against Adelaide, Hawthorne, and Sydney, and just there on paper, that really demonstrates a clear golfing ability over the, the, the last three teams in the comp. North Melbourne started the year well at 2-0, and they've been dreadful since. They've really got a staunch of the bleeding on this season at the moment. They've lost all of their last seven games, and if it weren't for having two deplorable teams in this competition this year, they would look like a wooden spoon team on current form. Then finally, your worst two teams this year are obviously Hawthorne and West Coast, and it's, it's pretty hard to judge who is actually worse than the other. I think the Eagles probably have a little bit more of an excuse 
excuse when you look at the injury list. Hawthorne are a pretty healthy side this year. On paper, Hawthorne's list, in my opinion, is the weakest I've seen in a long time, but largely that's due to experience, not because the talent they have is no good. But they went into this year braced for some pain, and that's exactly what we're seeing, and it's only because West Coast are probably a bad side to begin with and then had you know that dreadful injury list. So in terms of form of what we've seen this year, I'd, I'd put Hawthorne ahead because I think... Their best has been better when they, they've put together you know, that three-week patch a few weeks ago where they nearly beat the Giants and the Crows. They beat North Melbourne. By comparison, West Coast haven't really put together a meaningful form for more than a couple of quarters here and there. And uh, obviously, a huge loss against Carlton as well. I am going to do a video uh, shortly about the race for the wooden spoon so we can delve into that topic a little bit more. But that is my 18 team, guys. Let me know in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with. I think my round three rankings copped an absolute begging from you guys. But uh, by round six, when I did this, there was a little bit more of a consensus. We seem to agree with each other a little bit more. So I'm intrigued to hear what you say about these rankings. Pretty tough, particularly in the middle parts of the ladder to separate the good from the bad. But as always, I appreciate you guys watching. Hope you're enjoying the content. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.